the heck are you doing? Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Mike Berlin. You're watching Wild Pet Family. And sorry I haven't been uploading recently. I, uh, it's actually Sunday afternoon and I just got off of work. And um, I got a school project going on so I've been putting a ton of hours into there. Uh, but I have a really good video coming up. I'm gonna be making some venison hot dogs and it's gonna be a, be a multiple day process. Um, so it's a great afternoon project. So keep on watching and I'm gonna show you how I turn a great meat from out there in the woods into a hot dog that I can put on the grill and feed to my family. So here's the inside look at my fridge. Right here I have roughly, I don't know, 20 pounds of cubed up venison that I just have in vacuum sealer bags. And right here is a bunch of beef fat. I just pulled it out of my deep freezer so it is rock solid. So I'm gonna give it tonight and just let it sit in the fridge and defrost, but I don't want it to defrost all the way because I want it semi-frozen when I grind it tomorrow afternoon. All right, y'all, so I'm back and it's a couple days later and I'm sitting here on my front porch trying to contemplate what just happened. So I had a bunch of footage and I'm in the process of making the hot dogs right now and I had an SD card issue and unfortunately a lot of it got deleted. Um, so I'm gonna just tell you where I'm at right now. So I have 70% venison and 30% beef fat. Now, the beef fat comes from a local farm here. My in-laws actually gift us with that after Christmas, and I saved the beef fat for things like um, ground beef, hot dogs, tallow, etc. So, I was able to use that and the venison that I got from right behind the house. So, the next step is going to be seasoning. Now, I have all of it in about one inch cubes, and I mixed the AC leg Frankfurter hot dog bologna seasoning into it and give it a rough mix. After that, I send it through the grinder on a eighth inch plate and I put it in a tote, mixed it all together. And um, that's pretty much where we're at. We have ground meat and uh, we're ready for the next step. So keep watching. Now, you've probably heard me say a couple times throughout this video that I'm going to grind this multiple times. And there, there's a reason for it. So that reason is emulsification. And basically what that is, is working this fat into the meat proteins, which creates a bond. And that's gonna hold it all together rather than having a crumbly hot dog or something that is striated and defined, sort of like this, similar to an Italian sausage. Now, the concept is pretty simple. It's sort of like um, how kneading works gluten um, and creates a better bond throughout the bread, creating a chewier dough, etc. That's what I'm gonna do to these hot dogs because we don't want crumbly hot dogs, we want a hot dog that stays together. So, I'm gonna show you a trick to make that easier for the grinding process, and um, we're gonna make a good hot dog. So before I do anything, I'm just gonna give this a rough mix, make sure that visually this fat and the meat looks like it has even distribution. Um, there was a couple times that I ground a few chunks of fat right in a row, a few chunks of meat right in a row. Well, I'm just going to kind of mix that together and you can already feel it getting tacky just by working it. Um, but it needs to be worked much, much more. So I'm going to fill two or three more sheets and let it sit for about an hour. We're going to start grinding again. Another helpful tip after you do your first pass through, make sure that you clean your grinder plate and your grinder blades. Everything else really doesn't matter. I usually put this in a Ziploc bag, stick it in the fridge to keep it cool so I don't have to clean it. But when you put your first pass through, it usually rids out the majority of your sinews and tendons and it ends up getting clogged in this once it's kind of filtered out and your grinds after that, you're not gonna have an issue with it, but clean it after your first grind. Well, I'm here the next morning. I got caught up with a couple things yesterday afternoon, but I just pulled the trays out of the freezer and it's actually about the perfect consistency right now. So I can take a spatula and just kind of stick it down in there, pop up these chunks, and uh, yeah, it's pretty much a frozen log and um, that's gonna go straight into my grinder and that auger in the grinder is gonna be able to grab it. It's gonna keep cool and uh, we're gonna do this about three more times.
second grind done, it's going back in the freezer and I'm gonna regrind it once more in about two hours. Now it's a couple hours later and I'm ready for grind number three and I want you to pay attention to this color and texture compared to this right here now that I have my third grind done. So once again, I'm gonna pack it onto baking sheets, slice it up and uh, stick it back in the freezer. And what I'm gonna do at least one more grind and I'll see what it looks like after that. All right, so we're down to grind number four and this is gonna be the final grind for it. I just pulled it out of the freezer and I'm glad I did. And I hope this is gonna be enough. I actually did a sample piece. I just rolled it into a hot, do hot dog shape, threw it on a frying pan with a little bit of olive oil and ate a hot dog for lunch. And it was good, but it wasn't quite there as far as the the consistency so i'm gonna send it through the grinder one more time hopefully this does it and um i really hope it does it because i got the walking cooler going and i'm gonna throw a lid on this and let it cool because i want it a little bit warmer rather than freezing cold when i send it through this sausage stuffer Here we are and the final grind is done. Now, to you, it may look like stringy ground beef, but that's only because it was super cold while I was going through the grinder. Now, if I take a little bit of this in my hand and I rub it out, now it's starting to look like almost a meat paste. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. That means that the meat and the proteins have been worked together, bonded together, and that is going to give you your classical hot dog texture. So now that I got the final grind done, I'm going to take the lid that came with this tote, just gonna stick it on top and put it in the walk-in cooler. Now I want it to come up to like 35, 40 degrees, no higher than 40 degrees, but make it so that it's pliable and easy to work with and easy to send through the sausage stuffer and pack into casings. And if you don't have a walk-in cooler, just pack it up in segments so that you can stick it in your fridge, pack it away and uh, just work with what you got. So here we are roughly 24 hours later. I just pulled the tub of hot dog meat out of the cooler and um, I'm gonna go ahead and stuff my salsa stuff. Now, for these hot dogs, I'm going to be using a 26 millimeter collagen casing. That's going to give me a nice size hot dog, and uh, the collagen casing is nice and convenient. It's also edible, and uh, you're going to see why this process is super easy. Now, if you want to go the more realis realistic route, you can use lamb casings, natural lamb casings, but they are uh, not nearly as uniform um, and not as easy to use, although they will give you a better snap to your hot dog. Um, I just did not have lamb casings. I have these, so this is what we're using. Now, one of the nicest things about these collagen casings is uh, that they fit right over the horn of your sausage stuffer. And just like that, we're ready to start making hot dogs. So I'm pretty much gonna start cranking this thing down. And uh, once I start getting some hot dog coming out, I'll put a little back pressure on it and uh, let this thing work. And I want to fill up the end. That basically creates a seal. And then from there, whoa, just kind of pinch some of this back and go ahead and tie it off. So that's good enough. It's gonna keep the meat inside there and put a little pressure. And just pump this hot dog into the casing just like that you get the picture so that is one of the collagen casing links now obviously I have to twist them up turn them into hot dogs and I'll show you that process but uh, yeah that's probably about eight pounds of hot dogs that you're able to stuff into one set of these collagen casings. So super convenient. You're not constantly reloading the horn, but let's tie these up and uh, keep going.
Now, this is really easy. I got one, two, three links made. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick the link that I want right there. I'm gonna put a pinch in it, and then I'm gonna skip a link, put another pinch in it, and that's the one that I'm gonna twist. And uh, I pretty much just work my way down along here doing that. So one more time, that's about where I want it. I'm gonna put a pinch in it. Next link, I want it about that big, and that's where I put my twist. So, yeah, pretty simple. So when I started turning these out, um, I decided that I wasn't gonna do what I planned on doing. And what that was, was to go ahead and put these on racks, put them in smoker, smoke them, bring them up to temp like that. But I don't think that's what I'm gonna do. The reason being is this right here is one of the hot dogs um, that kind of broke free and it is holding perfect form. I mean, that meat is really nicely emulsified. And I think for ease of uh, cooking, just when I get off of work, I'm gonna have these stacked in vacuum seal bags and I'm gonna put them in the sous vide. So little, you know, change of plans, but I think it's gonna work and we'll try it out, see what happens. Well, all the casings are stuffed hot dogs are vacuum sealed and I got a little sampler going right now but um yeah it's time to go to bed all right so I'm on the final stretch of this hot dog project and I got the sous vide heating up to 150 degrees and I got everything from last night vacuum sealed six hot dogs per pack and pretty much all I'm gonna do is drop these in here and that's gonna slowly bring it up to temperature and um, I'm not going to get popping skins on the smoker as well as not allowing that beef fat to render out when you typically get hot spots in the smoker. So it's gonna evenly heat all of this, 150 degrees. I'm gonna do it for two hours, pull it out, hot dogs are cooked and ready for the grill. All right, so like I said earlier in this video, this project is gonna be a day-to-day -day kind of deal when I get home off of work. So I actually have another batch in the sous vide cooking right now, but this was the batch from last night. So I got six hot dogs. I'm gonna throw them on the grill. We are in the final stages of this. I'm gonna cook some hot dogs and we're gonna eat some dinner. And uh, it's starting to feel a little rewarding now. <laughs> The hot dogs are done and I got them all dressed up. First off, I got the deluxe version, which is sauerkraut, which is cabbage from our garden, onions from our garden, and uh, yellow mustard. Second, just plain old yellow mustard hot dog and the ketchup hot dog. And then same thing for this plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this ketchup hot dog, slice it right in half so that you can see the profile view of this hot dog. And uh, we are going to eat because I'm super hungry. Y'all, that is the hot dog right there, and that is perfect. It looks exactly like a beef hot dog, and it tastes exactly like a beef dog, I think. Yeah, so go ahead, if you like this video, if you like the processing stuff, like, share, subscribe. But um, I got too much going on up here. I'm gonna finish eating. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you later.